Ahead of delivery to Japan Airlines, Simple Flying had the opportunity to tour the new A350-1000 for the carrier. While we already knew there would be some pretty impressive products on board, the finished interior is truly exceptional, showcasing Japanese innovation at its very best. So, if you're ready, let's take a closer look at what to expect on board Japan Airlines' brand new Airbus A350-1000. The aircraft will be the first A350-1000 for Japan Airlines and is set to replace the carrier's Boeing 777-300ERs. The airline already flies the A350-900, but only domestically. Thus, the new Dash 1000s will be the flagship long-haul aircraft for the fleet. It's not only the first of its type for Japan Airlines, but also showcases a bunch of industry firsts to make for a very interesting aircraft indeed. For starters, most airlines flying with premium cabins will dish out high-quality noise-cancelling headphones for passengers in business and first, which is great but can be uncomfortable after many hours in the air. Japan Airlines has gone for something rather different – in-seat speakers that funnel sound to passengers' ears directly, eliminating the need for any sort of headset at all. Japan Airlines says it has tested the technology and found that with the normal ambient noise of an aircraft cabin, the sound from the speakers is barely audible outside of the person's own suite. This is hugely exciting as it opens up options for lying sideways, moving about and even falling asleep to the sound of music or podcasts. But of course, this is all about choice. While the speakers are an option, premium customers will still have the option of top-of-the-range B&O noise-cancelling headphones. There's also the option to connect via Bluetooth and use personal headphones as well, a feature that runs beyond the premium cabins and into economy and premium economy too. Talking of premium economy, the 24 seats recline by a decent amount, while a leg rest pops up to a 90-degree angle, if you wish, to fully support feet and calves. For the first time in aviation, however, Japan Airlines has opted for a motorized movement for this seat, usually something reserved for business and first-class products only. The airline explained that this decision was based on customer feedback, with some complaining that it was difficult to return the seat to an upright position using only their body. Japan Airlines has chosen to retain the hard-shell seat in premium economy, which again is contrary to the trend across the industry. Carriers like Virgin and Emirates prefer to allow forward passengers to recline into the space of the seat behind. When asked why this was, JAL explained that, quite simply, Japanese people would likely be concerned about infringing on the space of the person behind and would probably choose not to enjoy the recline at all rather than upset a fellow passenger. JAL has embraced the mantra of bigger is better throughout the aircraft. In business, the screen is 24 inches bigger than just about all its competitors and the same size of ANA's first-class screen in its flagship product, The Room. Premium economy passengers are treated to 16 inches, while even economy class gets 13 inches of entertainment. That's the same size as those in premium economy on carriers like Emirates, Qantas and United. As well as the usual selection of TV shows, movies and music, the IFE comes with one feature that all AV geeks will love – the plane cam. JAL's A350-1000 has not one but two plane cams – a tail cam for those impressive views of the aircraft from above and a forward belly cam that lets you keep an eye on all the goings-on on the ground. Jumping up to the first-class suite, it's huge, very private and has tons of storage space. Not to mention walls so high the cabin crew will struggle to look over at all. But the biggest wow factor here is the enormous IFE screen, the biggest in the sky at 43 inches. The first class suite for JAL's A350-1000 is truly remarkable. Inside the suite, personal space is maximized with a split double couch or seat that offers a multitude of arrangements ranging from fully upright to a small double bed. The width of the seat is ample for two people to sit side by side, while a third can take up the ottoman. 
Why you'd want to invite two other people into your little haven of peace and privacy is beyond us, but it's a nice touch if, for example, passengers need to have a business meeting during their journey. Airbus is always improving its products, and the A350 is no exception. In what Airbus terms as a new production standard, it has reduced the aircraft's weight, improved the maximum takeoff weight, and augmented usable space in the cabin. The first A350-900 with this new standard went to Iberia in 2022. Now, Japan Airlines will be the first to fly the updated Dash 1000. The differences are small but significant. Overall, the A350-1000 has gained 4 inches of width and an impressive 35 inches of length in the cabin. No changes have been made to the fuselage, just clever tweaks to add interior space. Most noticeable is the extra 25 inches of space at the rear of the aircraft, which allows for a cavernous galley space that puts some home kitchens to shame. Airbus says that in 2024, all new production A350-900s will have the new standards. For the Dash 1000, it'll take a little longer, but by 2025, all new aircraft will be like this. Previously, some airlines have taken the Dash 1000s with hybrid cabins, either having the extra space at one end or the other, but JAL is the first to fly the complete new cabin standard in service. The A350-1000 has always come with the option of having no central overhead bins in some of the cabin areas. In economy, central bins are a must, but moving into business and first, there isn't always a need. Virgin Atlantic chose to keep the central bins in upper class, commenting that it felt too cathedral-like without them. Japan Airlines, on the other hand, has taken the plunge and removed the central bins from both business and first-class cabins, resulting in a cabin that feels very open and airy. Storage remains along the side walls of the aircraft, providing ample space for these lightly loaded areas. Alongside this, business-class passengers have space for one suitcase under the ottoman, and in first, there's space for two. Japan Airlines is the first to fly the A350-1000 with no central bins, giving premium customers a unique experience on board the aircraft. The airline has put a lot of thought into customizing its products. In first class, the mega suite doors are semi-transparent, taking inspiration from Japanese shoji or rice paper doors found in traditional houses. The rippling pattern in the door surface is reminiscent of bamboo, and is carried through into the gold-colored metal trim around the frame. The door not only nods to Japanese heritage, but also increases the light penetration into the suites, giving the passengers a sense of space and brightness. In business, another shoji-inspired door makes an appearance in the form of a full-length wardrobe with a sliding semi-transparent door. Below, a separate shoe storage area can be opened independently or can be combined with the wardrobe to give enough space to hang even a very long coat. Premium economy passengers have the option to increase privacy with a tall screen divider between seats, which again is that iconic semi-transparent design. And in economy, it's all about the colors and materials which were selected to evoke a kimono design. In fact, throughout all areas of the cabin, the Japanese-ness of the aircraft shines through, with multifunctional elements, smart use of space, and of course, technology. Japan Airlines will first deploy this aircraft from Tokyo to New York JFK, with Dallas coming later. Given the level of thought and detail that has gone into every area of the cabin, it looks to be a pretty darn good way of getting between Asia and North America in 2024. What do you think of this cabin? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.